Hello friends, we are uh, going to have a presentation about the book called uh, Techniques and Civilization by Lewis uh, Mumford. We should uh, begin with uh, who is Lewis Mumford and why we take in consideration of his words in our lecture actually. Uh, Lewis Mumford was an American historian, sociologist, philosopher of technology and literally critic actually. Uh, particular note for his uh, study of cities and urban architecture, he had a broad career uh, as a writer. Uh, Mumford's uh, earliest books in the field of uh, literally the criticism uh, have had a lasting impact on, we can say, contemporary American literary criticism. The Golden Day contributed to a resurgence in scholarly research on the work of 1850s American uh, authors and Herman Melville, a study of his life and vision, effectively launched a revival in the study of the work of Herman Melville. Soon after, with the book The Brown Decades, he began to establish himself as an authority in American architecture and urban life, which he interpreted in a social context. In his early writings on urban life, Mumford was optimistic about human abilities and wrote that the human race would use electricity and mass communication to build a better world for all humankind. He would later take a more pessimistic stance, we can say. His early architectural criticism also helped to bring wider public recognition to the work of Henry Hobson Richardson, Louis Sullivan, and Frank Lloyd Wright. We may start with who influenced Mumford and how it affected on his thoughts. We have two specific names that I would like to share with all. He influenced by the work of Scottish theorist Sir Patrick Gaddis and worked closely with his associate the British sociologist Victor Bramford. Sir Patrick Gaddis Sir Patrick Gaddis was a Scottish biologist, sociologist, geographer, philanthropist and pioneering town planner. He also known for his innovative thinking in the fields of urban planning as Lewis Mumford and sociology. Gaddis influenced Mumford as he influenced worldwide. Mumford claimed that Geddes was a global thinker in practice, a whole generation or more before the Western democracies fought a global war. Victor Brandon Victor Brandon was a British sociologist. He was the founder of Sociological Society of America. Again, we see that the urban theorist Lewis Mumford influenced from a sociologist and this is a pretty nice example actually of the uh, relation between the urban architecture and the sociology. Uh, Mumford was also a temporary contemporary sorry contemporary and friend of Frank Lloyd Wright, uh, Clarence Stein, the Frederick Osborne, Edmund and Bacon and uh, Wenever Bush. And here comes the ideas. As an urban theorist and writer, Lewis Mumford had ideas that actually really interests our lecture deeply. Had, uh, let's look at it, guys. Before, as I said, we, we arrived to the book Techniques and Civilization, we first need to look at his ideas and the possibility of thoughts, actually. Uh, firstly, the biotechnics. Uh, Mumford uh, was deeply concerned with the relationship between techniques and bioviability. Uh, it is a hard thing to pronounce, pronounce it, I can say. Even pronounce it is uh, a hard thing to say. Uh, before the advent of technology, uh, most areas of the planet were bioviable at some level or other, however, uh, were uh, certain forms of technology advances rapidly, bioviability decreased dramatically. Uh, these uh, are the little informations that would help us to understand of his thoughts. Uh, I thought so. Uh, secondly, the mega 
techniques a Mumford contends that the goals which are the emphasizing constant unrestricted expansion production and replacement work against technical perfection durability social efficiency and overall human satisfaction actually a modern technology which he called mega techniques fails to produce lasting quality products by using devices of customers actually sorry consumers uh, actually uh, the polytechnics against monotechnics uh, polytechnic de de described as an enlistment of many different modes of uh, technology providing a complex framework to solve human problems a uh, monotechnic is described as the technology only for its own sake which oppresses humanity as it moves along its own trajectory and uh, after the following uh, thing is the mega machines, the Mumford refers large hierarchical uh, organizations as mega machines, a machine using humans as its components. These organi organizations co comprise Mumford's stage theory uh, of civilization. And uh, the last thing, the urban civilization, Mumford wrote critically of urban culture believing the city is a product of earth a fact of nature a man's method of expression furthermore actually Manfred recognizes the crisis that facing urban culture the distrusting of the growing finance industry the political structures that I would like to say the political structures of the finance industry Manfred wants to know how and why Western Europeans carried the physical sciences to the point where the whole mode of life had been adapted to the pace and capacities of the machine so that in effect uh, the society had surrendered to the machine. He traces this development to the invention of the clock which allows time to be divided up and measured in the same sense that space is and help create the belief in an independent world of mathematically measurable sequences and the most important part for us in his ideas actually all the ideas of him are important but this is the most important in my opinion of course the three epochs of civilization eotechnic paleotechnic and neotechnic the development of the machine civilization is divided into three successive but overlapping and interpenetrating phases as a definition. The eotechnic phase is characterized by, by actually, yeah, it's, it's really basic, but actually uh, wood and water, with the primary inventions being mechanical uh, clocks, the telescope, the cheap paper print, the printing press, the magnetic compass and the scientific method. The paleotechnic phase is characterized by coal and iron. As uh, I mentioned uh, just uh, a couple seconds ago, uh, the eotechnic was wood and water, now the paleotechnic is coal and iron. After 750 industry passed into a new phase with uh, different sources of power. Uh, different materials and different social objectives that uh, multiplied and uh, sp spread uh, the methods and goals of the first wave that were directed towards the quantification of life. The source of mechanical power in the paleotechnic phase uh, was coal. Yeah, actually, the coal and its industry rested on the mine uh, whose products dominated its life and determined the characteristics of its inventions and improvements. Uh, this period is also marked by environmental uh, degra degradation, I would like to say, and the uh, treatment of the environment as another abstraction along with money, prices, capital and most of human existence. It also saw the worker as a resource to be exploited, mined, exhausted, and discarded. And the neo-technique phase, the scientific method, took possession 
uh, of the other domains of experience and turn the living organism uh, and human society into objects of systematic investigation. It is characterized by electricity and alloys and in order to survive it, uh, it has to organize uh, industry and its polity on a worldwide scale. This phase is marked by instantaneous uh, personal communication over long distances and this uh, personal communication is the mechanical symbol of the worldwide cooperation of thought and feeling that must emerge if the world is not to sink into ruin, as in his opinions. Actually, from the earlier phase of World War II to 1990s, the United States of America, especially the Reagan's, uh, Ronald Reagan's presidency period, they fought with uh, communism because of uh, Soviet Russia. The Cold War thing, actually. Uh, actually, we can see this equalization of distribution on the schools, libraries, hospitals, universities, museums, bath, uh, baths, sorry, uh, lodging houses, and gymnasia. The etymologic roots of the communism, the community, uh, describes as whole in thoughts of Manfred, actually, even though. Manfred tried to avoid communist thoughts in his ideas because of the general politics of the country. No one wants to uh, get in a trouble uh, from the government. Uh, thoughts in his ideas uh, because of the general politics of the country. I said he could not escape from the equalization of distribution in urban planning. Uh, so maybe it's the appropriate uh, way to plan. Uh, maybe not. Uh, it's actually the designer's choice in the end, in my opinion, of course. Uh, that was the story of the techniques and civilization by Lewis Mumford. Thank you.